first lived in Latvia as a diplomat between 1996 and 1999, a few years after Latvia regained independence from the crumbling Soviet Union. I returned to live in Latvia in 2022. This podcast series is based on my observations and experience, with some history and comparisons with my home country of England on aspects of life in Latvia and things to see and experience. On film and animation. Latvia has a rich history in film and animation making. It is also re-emerging as a significant industry. Latvia is a choice location for many European and UK film, TV and streaming series because of skilled technicians, lower costs and Latvian government incentives to film there. I will take you on a tour of Latvia's Cinevilla studio. We'll explore the history of Latvian film and animation and discover a few fascinating characters. We will visit the Latvian Film Museum in Riga and talk to the head of the museum about the importance of film and animation in the cultural life of Latvia. First character, the film director Sergei Eisenstein. The city of Riga has a perplexing situation about recognising two prominent figures, Sergei Eisenstein, a revolutionary film director, and his father, Mikhail Eisenstein, a well-known architect. Sergei, the genius behind groundbreaking films like Battleship Potemkin, and October, remains overshadowed by his father's architectural fame in Riga. Sergei was born into a privileged family in 1898 in Riga. The Eisenstein family lived in an apartment on Valdemara Street. Sergei's childhood experiences in Riga greatly influenced his later work. His early traumas, including his relationship with his parents, found expression in his films. Sergei's childhood drawings capture the essence of -of turn-of-the-century Riga, a multicultural hub under the Russian Empire. Although destined to follow in his father's footsteps as an architect, Sergei's path diverged due to the First World War. He became involved in theatre and film, ultimately embracing the art of cinema. Sergei's innovative use of montage propelled him to cinematic prominence. His movies, including Battleship Potemkin, October, Alexander Nevsky and Ivan the Terrible, showcased his unique perspective on power and revolution. Sergei's artistic brilliance and affinity for depicting the machinery of power emerged early, evident in his debut film The Strike. His films successfully merged revolutionary ideals with pioneering montage techniques, earning him global recognition. Despite this, his clash with the Soviet authorities intensified over time, due to his artistic non-conformity. Banned and destroyed projects like Old and New and Bejin Meadow marked a turbulent period in his life. His sojourn in Hollywood didn't lead to compliance either. Sergei's artistic vision clashed with Hollywood norms. This phase also saw an incomplete Mexican project due to political interference. Back in the Soviet Union, his life remained precarious and his work facing constant scrutiny. The monumental Alexander Nevsky became a masterpiece, a testament to his resilience, 
while even the terrible, provoked intrigue and controversy. Tragically, Sergei's life was cut short at 50. His cinematic legacy included pioneering montage principles, iconic films, extensive theoretical works and graphic art. He left a realm of boundless possibilities, encouraging enthusiasts to explore his genius in his works, writings and drawings. Sergei Eisenstein, Riga born, forever changed cinema with his revolutionary ideas and visionary storytelling, ensuring his impact endures through time. I saw his film Battleship Potemkin while living in Moscow in the 1980s. I don't recall anything except one scene that still haunts me. That is of the baby in a pushchair falling down the 200 Primorsky steps in Odessa. I even went to Odessa in 1981 to see where that scene was shot. It was named Potemkin Steps then, but reverted to its original name when Ukraine regained independence in 1991. It was put to me that Sergei Eisenstein wasn't really Latvian. Yes, born and raised in Riga, but his allegiances remained elsewhere. I'll let you debate that one. The second characters, the animators Rose Stibra and Ansis Berzinch. These two pioneers established Latvia's cut-out-and-drawn animation tradition. They believe that animation transforms static images into life. Their filmmaking process involved a team of patient individuals who meticulously drew, phased, coloured, cut, glued and shot frames, subsequently infusing the images with vitality through music and text. Their approach to animation revolved around portraying the beauty and boundlessness of the world, creating wonders where none were seen before. Rosa Stibra was inspired by a performance of Princess Gundega and King Brusubabda, at age 10, which ignited her passion for the arts. She enrolled in the Leningrad State Institute of Theatre, Music and Film, focusing on puppet animation. Ansis Berzinch, on the other hand, began as a photography and film enthusiast before venturing into animation. His introduction to the craft came through Rosa and their collaboration sparked a lifelong partnership. Their first film, Rainy Day, was made of cardboard fabric and application paper. The team averaged two animated short films a year, establishing the tradition of a leading genre, musical films based on a poem or song. Maya Brenza and Zintra Almana, animators with distinct styles, joined their team in 1973. The addition of animators led to more refined and nuanced cut-out animation. They transitioned to drawn animation, resulting in graceful movements, transformations and fleeting images that enriched their films. 1983, the first hand-drawn film, The Pocket, was made. In the late 1980s, the group moved to the Regal Film Studio, where they formed a separate animation studio, Dalka, which has since become legendary and iconic in Latvian animation. The animation studio Dalka, symbolised by a black and yellow logo portraying a person heading towards the horizon, embodies the creative partnership of Rosa and Ansis. Collaboration was a cornerstone of their work, 
with Rosa and Ansis working with renowned and emerging artists, composers and animators. Their films intertwine cultural heritage with modernity, drawing from Latvian literary classics, contemporary authors and folk songs. This approach ensured their films resonated with local audiences, connecting cultural roots with a modern expression. Despite facing challenges and changes in the animation landscape, their dedication to portraying childhood as a multifaceted experience endured. Their films, including musicals, drawn animation and feature-length productions, captivated children and adults. Rosa and Ansis created films that offered poignant and beautiful narratives, inviting viewers to explore layers of meaning and reflect on the joys and complexities of childhood. Their legacy extends beyond their years at Dauka, inspiring a new generation of Latvian animators and filmmakers. Although the studio closed in 2010, their collaborative and innovative approach to animation has left an indelible mark on Latvian animation and cinema. Fifty years after the release of their first animated film, Rainy Day, the Latvian Filmmakers Union said in 2020, the contribution of Rosa Stibra and Ansis Berzinc to the introduction of animation and the education of future generations of artists and the sharing of knowledge is invaluable. Since the experience of Dauka, Latvian two-dimensional animation has developed, improved and achieved real attention and appreciation in the world. So what is the state of the Latvian film industry now? An article from Variety magazine neatly brings us up to date. Around 30 years ago, Vistor's Kanaris began his journey to become a filmmaker in Latvia, recognising that his path would be challenging. In those times, aspiring Latvian directors had to study film in Moscow or St. Petersburg. After Latvia regained independence from the Soviet Union, Kairis was among the first graduates of the newly established film studies programme at the Latvian Academy of Culture. His film, Leaving by the Way, in 2001, marked a passionate journey for a group of filmmakers working in an industry still in its infancy. Fast forward to today, Latvia along with Lithuania and Estonia, is in the spotlight at the European film market 2023, reflecting the significant progress it has made in the global cinema landscape. Latvia's screen industry is flourishing, with a growing number of films and TV series produced and attracting ambitious international projects. A pivotal moment in this growth was a decade ago when Latvia launched its cash rebate programme, offering up to 30% on qualifying local expenditures, transforming the production landscape and making Latvia an attractive destination for filmmaking. The historical drama Sisi, a German series, found its way to Latvia, benefiting from the country's cash rebate programme. This production showcased Latvia's capabilities and boosted its capacity to host large international projects. Cinevilla Studio, boasting the region's most extensive open-air backlot and built sets for various historical periods, has become a major draw for international productions. Riga Film Studio, with the most significant soundstage in the Baltics, also adds to the country's appeal. Production costs in Latvia are about 25% cheaper than in neighbouring Germany, 
making it competitive with central European hubs like Budapest and Prague. Latvia's rich architectural diversity, stemming from its history under various rulers, is reflected in the wide range of productions it hosts. The BBC's War and Peace and the Berlin Prize-winning World War II drama Natural Light are examples of projects filmed in Latvia. The industry's strength lies in its ability to share stories with a global audience. Many Latvian films have made it to top-tier festivals in recent years, indicating the country's growing influence. The cash rebate programme and co-production financing has raised the bar for Latvian filmmakers. This support has enabled collaborations like Wanderers, a co-production involving Lithuania, Latvia, France and Serbia, demonstrating effective partnerships between Baltic neighbours and other European countries. The transformation of Latvia's film industry is remarkable, considering its journey from being controlled by larger neighbours to becoming an independent player on the international stage. The early struggles of not knowing how to produce European films have given way to a thriving industry that continues to expand. The spotlight on Latvia at the European film market underscores its progress and potential as a cinematic powerhouse. I visited Sinia Villa. You can too. It is 15 kilometres south of Tukums, signposted off the road between Tukums and Yelkova. You'll need a vehicle to get there. It is a 160 hectare site in the middle of nowhere. Sinia Villa is a film studio and technically a back lot. This area is for shooting outdoor scenes for films, television and streaming series with permanent exterior buildings or the space for temporary set construction. Cine Villa has various sets on the back lot which can be modified or dressed to resemble different periods. Back lot sets are sometimes shells with a facade, a roof and maybe two or three walls no rear or interior. To get to the upper stories, the actor must climb a ladder. Some sets are complete buildings. Cine Villa has both types. It has some solid building pavilions, street scenes for Paris, Rome and Cologne, and medieval and Viking sets. There is a very scary church. The fake blood still inside may upset some people. Second World War sets, a Russian train and a tram. You can walk around all of these and gain an insight into filmmaking. Each set has a QR code which will lead you to a video clip from a film that used that particular set. In the film industry, backlots are in decline. Audiences want to see actors in authentic locations, so films are often shot on location. The increased and cheaper use of CGI and green screens has meant that many films are entirely shot indoors and made by computer to look like outdoor locations. However, since being established in 2004 for the outdoor shooting of the film Defenders of Riga, Cine Villa is doing well. Recently, the site for shooting the German historical series Sissi has been used by many Latvian and foreign film producers. Even the BBC has shot historical drama scenes there. Reduced costs over backlots in the Czech Republic and Hungary, let alone studios in the UK, France and Germany, plus Latvian government financial incentives to film in Latvia, together with skilled studio staff, production crews and cheap extras actors have put Latvia on the European map for filmmaking. (music) 
I visited the Riga Film Museum. It regularly curates exhibitions displaying different aspects of cinema, directors, actors and film history. Like the characters we spoke about earlier in this episode, who have all had exhibitions dedicated to them. The museum was founded in 1988 and is located in an 18th century building on 10 Pietava Street in the old town of Riga. The idea to establish a film museum in Riga came from a cinema forum in 1986, which obtained permission from the Soviet Union Cinema Organization. Following Latvia's independence, the museum was first part of the National Film Centre of Latvia until 2010, when it was handed over to the Latvian Academy of Culture. It has been in various locations, from the rooms of Riga Video Centre, the Latvian State Archive of Audiovisual Documents, the Riga Film Studio and the former Museum of Illegal Press, before it moved to its present location. It is well worth a visit if you are interested in film and animation. The entrance is from Meja Pietava Street, a small alleyway. I spoke to the head of Riga Film Museum, Agnesa Logina, to learn more about Latvian film and animation. During the Soviet Russian occupation, when I believe that, that uh, the fields of film and animation were more centralised in Moscow and St. Petersburg, how was Latvia able to, to become and develop a very vibrant film and animation industry? Film was a very, very important uh, tool in the Soviet, Soviet Union and it was a very important tool in Soviet politics. So, uh, Soviet Union, like when when Soviet Union was was built, they already included a lot of film related activities within the the union, and like it was it was a really integral part of uh, of Soviet Union and Soviet politics. I guess it's mostly because uh, because cinema is one of the art forms that is most easily used for propaganda purposes, and it can reach really a large audience. We have to keep in mind how Soviet uh, Union operated with cinema. That it was also a centralized decision to have film studios in each uh, capital, local film studios all around the Union. So there was a film studio, like a big film studio in Riga, in Vilnius, in Tallinn. What is interesting about Riga is that Riga Film Studio was larger than Vilnius and Tallinn. It was a very large film studio. It was not as large as uh, St. Petersburg and Moscow that were the biggest film studios in the Soviet Union, but it was like second second level. In Riga, there were a lot of films made every year. I think at some point they were making up to like five to eight feature films per year. It means that it was basically a factory. There were hundreds of people working there. In early 1960s, Riga Film Studio became like this uh, centralized building and uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in 1961 they finished building this big Riga Film Studio building in uh, in Schmedlis, which is still there up to this day. The Riga Film Studio building itself sort of like uh, got all the film professionals under one roof. So once you get everybody under the same roof, that's when Riga Film Studio really starts uh, picking up speed. And uh, that's when it becomes really a factory. And that is uh, mid-1960s. We have to keep in mind that uh, animation history in Latvia was developing in uh, two different places at the same time. So one is Riga Film Studio, where the pioneer of puppet animation was... was, uh, he, He worked there, Arnold Burovs. And his team was uh, was physically in Riga Film Studio, but Rosa Stiever and Ansis Berzinj, they worked physically in, in television. Yeah, they were in a whole other place. And they worked with uh, with hand-drawn animation. Creative people gravitate towards towards each other. They, they had their places where they would meet. They had their cafes, their bars, their places. They were in contact, I think, a lot. This physical place of Riga Film Studio, I think that played a very, very important role. So 1960s is also the first, early 1960s, late 1950s is also the time when first after war Latvian artist generation, they become active. 
And with them, we get uh, a whole new, fresh breath of uh, of air. And also, 1960s is the is the time when uh, when politically, Soviet Union tries to become more um, up to date. <laughs> the center and periphery that. In periphery, which was Latvia at the time, everything is much more strict. I do not think that somebody like Tarkovsky would have been able to work in Latvia. I don't think that. I think he was allowed only in the center <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, to work there. What I'm trying to say is that also what, what a lot of these creators are and film directors and film professionals were saying is that during their studies in Moscow or St. Petersburg, they were watching a lot of foreign cinema as well. That changed their mindset. Films that were not available here, but they were only available in Moscow, for example. Mm. A lot of them got really some important impulses during their studies in, in Moscow or St. Petersburg. They, they came back, um, started working here and tried to implement that. It's a very interesting history to film and animation in, and a complex, a complex history to film and animation in Latvia. Independence regained, yeah. um, some difficult times perhaps for the film and, and animation industry in the first years, but it seems to be really recovering. How would you say that what the present state of film and animation is in Latvia? I think it's very good, you know, all things considered, it's very good, mm-hmm. uh, because the 1990s, it was a very, very difficult period on many levels, one of them was also in cinema because, as I said, Riga Film Studio, it was massive. It was a factory. It was really like filmmaking factory. And uh, in 1990s, when, when we regained independence, it was not clear what to do with all this infrastructure. So unfortunately, some of the decisions that were made, in my opinion, were not right. <laughs> like uh, Riga Film Studio became uh, privatized in um, 19 I think the, the decision to do that was made in 1995 it became a private company in 1997 decisions made in 1990s that um, that in hindsight does not they do not seem uh, to be the right decisions that's put like that of course there was some sort of like a drop of cinema production in general and uh, there were years when um, when there were no um, feature films made, for example. But that, that, again, is a question of finance. I would say that Latvian film industry has become more stable over the last 10, 15 years. 2010, the parliament uh, passed film law, which I think on some level helped to create some uh, yeah some basic uh, rules for how this field can operate thanks to very good lobbying from national film center and very proper work from the, from their side they were able to also get some extra funding for um, for for Latvian film uh, industry around 2018 so starting from 2016 to 2019 i think Latvian film centenary no Latvian centenary film program was a very big Thing. So to celebrate 100 years of Latvian independence, 16 films in total were made. Film companies they didn't have any, they didn't have enough people to work on their films. So a lot of new professionals came into this industry and started working and got their first experiences and uh, and were very quickly thrown into this field. And they had to learn on the spot, uh, which means that currently, actually, there are way more film professionals than there were, I don't know, some 10 years ago. That also helped to increase faith in Latvian cinema from the audience point of view. Up until, uh, really up until like 10, 15 years ago, because of uh, very, very limited funding, Latvian film uh, scene was more, more about indie films and indie indie productions and not so much about films that are accessible to general audience, <laughs> general public. So for a lot of people experienced from the first decade of Latvian cinema, yeah, it's, it, it's very experimental, very indie, and they have very bad memories about it because they go to, to watch Latvian film and they don't understand anything that's happening there because it's very, um, yeah, experimental. But something that is sort of like mainstream cinema started developing only like really, I think, over the last 10 years. And uh, that, I think, is a very, very important development because that increases the faith within the Latvian audience that, uh, that they... they yeah, that this is something that is uh, worth paying money for, and uh, 
and this is something that uh, that they yeah they should pay attention to and uh, the centenary program really helped with that because it was mostly very accessible and also in 2019 blizzard of souls came out which was, which is the biggest film latvian film of uh, independence period well definitely the most expensive latvian film over the over the last 30 years it became very popular because it's based on uh, on a very popular novel and then unfortunately covid happened that created a massive blow for latvian film industry but like the good thing about uh, that came out of all of it all the situation is that we got two very good tv tv shows i would say and uh, that is something that is also now being seen as uh, and being perceived as um, as a more interesting direction in which to develop but we still need to get those uh, people back into film theaters because uh, there's no future for cinema outside of film theaters and that is one of the things that i really really believe in yeah documentary cinema and animation like these are film genres that we're able to develop more in latvia because you don't need a lot of money for for making a documentary that's like way cheaper than uh, than feature film <laughs> also another very important aspect that maybe sometimes gets overlooked is that latvians are introvert uh, introverted and they like to work alone you can't really work alone on a feature film that's not quite possible but with animation there are sometimes very fascinating stories about how somebody makes a film on their own. One of my favorite stories is about Gene Zilbelwoods and his film Away, which is absolutely amazing. It's it's a it's a very very lovely and uh, extremely touching and emotional story about a boy who survives a plane crash and has to travel around the island where he's now alone battling all kinds of demons and monsters that mm. are on his way. And Gene Zilbelwood has made this film alone for four years while living in, with his parents. Now he's working with some other people, but, but the result is, I think, amazing. It's, I think, is it's a very Latvian thing to do. <laughs> let's, let's say it like that. <laughs> and uh, Away is really an amazing work, and uh, everybody should watch it. It's a very rich history you talked about. Very rich, a bit yeah. complex, but very rich. And here we are in the, in the film museum. Yes. And I see that there's a big school group who are visiting. And how does the film museum enlighten and inform the younger generation about Latvia's film and animation sector? Talking to, to school children about Latvian film history is one of the priorities we have set for ourselves. We don't talk enough about film history in Latvian school system and uh, that is a big problem I find. So we as film museum we made a, a very conscious decision a while ago that we're going to focus on school children and that is going to like because we are a very small museum and we are we have limited resources and of course we have to choose our priorities. So we chose that we're going to create content for school children so they can come here, learn more about Latvian film history and Latvian cinema in relation to what they're, what they're learning in school. We also have some, uh, some workshops that we offer to, to school children, uh, for example, animation workshops. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. we actually had a very beautiful exhibition a few years ago about the Rosa Stieber and Anses Bersin, and it was very beautiful. Yeah. We experienced that animation, especially this type of animation, it's very interesting for both grown-ups and kids mm. and all kinds of generations, really. Mm. And that was really touching to see how grandparents are coming with their grandchildren and all of them, like basically these, these Latvian animation film classics, they mean something for all of these generations. For grandparents, it's something that they, they grew up with and grandchildren enjoy it because it's still very powerful and it's still it's these are still amazing works of art so that was very nice it was just really nice mm -hmm. <laughs> to see yeah. how the, to see that power of um, of art listening to this wonderful account of latvia's film sector reminded me of my time in latvia in the 1990s the cinemas in riga were packed i went to see the british comedy the full monty it has subtitles in latvian and russian the problem was that the subtitles came on screen before the actors spoke and the audience laughed loudly. I missed all the jokes in the film. I tried three times to watch it, 
all to packed audiences at the cinema, and the result was the same each time. In conclusion, Latvia has a vibrant film industry. It is both culturally important to the country and an industry growth sector. It also has a fascinatingly rich history. I'll say something that not everyone will agree with. Please take it as a foreigner's observation. The Russian-Soviet occupation was, of course, wrong. The phrase, Aleppo cannot change its spots, is in my mind thinking about Russia's present attempt to conquer. But not every aspect of life during those times was bad. Film and animation flourished. Yes, it was heavily censored, but creators found their way around the propagandists. Latvian films and animation were very popular across the Soviet bloc. I hope that in Latvia's future, more emphasis will be given to the great Latvian creators who worked during those times. They are a part of Latvia's history. Whether you are a cinema buff or an occasional watcher on TV, online or at the cinema, film is a wonderful educational and pleasure pursuit. Do put Cine Villa and the Riga Film Museum on your list of places in Latvia to visit and experience. Many Latvian films are now on YouTube with subtitles in English. Enjoy them. <laughs>